Hello, and welcome to our presentation on The Mechanical Reaper! In 1831, 22-year-old Virginia-born Cyrus McCormick, along with the help of a family slave, took over his father's project of developing, refining, and commercializing a design bought from a fellow farmer of a machine that would later mechanicalize the agricultural industry of the 19th century. Although Patrick Bell, a Scottish inventor and minister, first invented the reaping machine in 1826, he never saw a patent. Later patents were issued to inventors such as William Manning and Obed Husey, but it was not until Cyrus McCormick received his patent that the mechanical reaper was produced on a mass industrial scale and whom had the most success and influence on the expanding industrial world. It took McCormick six weeks to build the first field-tested, remodeled, and successfully demonstrated mechanical reaper, which he later began manufacturing himself. McCormick was motivated to patent the invention in 1834 due to competition from other inventors, who luckily did not target the true market in the American Midwest as he did. The mechanical reaper was used to harvest grain, and it was pulled through grain fields by ponies! The mechanical reaper itself allowed farmers to harvest grain faster. Originally, the amount of grain that could be harvested during the short harvest season limited food supply and also farm size. Harvesting the grain was a painstaking process to with the site. Now with the invention of the mechanical reaper, there were also fewer workers to pay. In 1820, 75% of the U.S. labor force worked in agriculture, but by 1860, it dropped to only 5%. Life sucked before the mechanical reaper, but now I can get grain with no pain. With sales almost non-existent in Virginia, Cyrus McCormick made the decision to move his business to Chicago in the late 1840s. His decision to move to the western frontier would repay him a fortune with its flat terrain, inexpensive land, and small labor pool. In addition, its railroad connections and water transportation routes allowed him to reach more customers. McCormick constantly worked to improve his invention, launching new models every year. He devoted himself to work, producing 500 mechanical reapers in 1848, 1,000 in 1851, and in 1857, producing 23,000. To boost sales, McCormick included credit for purchases, performance guarantees, replacement parts, and advertising, which became essential parts of American business. He befriended farmers, showed them how to use machines, and assessed their credit with an extensive service organization staffed with local agents. It is better that I should wait for the money than that you should wait for the machine you need. Cyrus McCormick. McCormick worked to expand his business. He bought agricultural patents and companies, eventually selling seed mowers, harvesters, and more along with the mechanical reaper. The invention of the mechanical reaper contributed to Western expansion and the industrialization of the Western economy, as many laborers who formerly worked in agricultural settings started working in factories. The city of Chicago even grew to be 60 times larger. Extra produce was also exported worldwide, and by 1851, the Mechanical Reaper was used internationally. The Mechanical Reaper eventually received international claim at the first World's Fair in London's Crystal Palace in 1851. The Mechanical Reaper truly changed the face of agriculture and an expanding industrial world. I'm Cyrus McCormick, and I approve this message. Uh, uh, uh. Wait, that's not the whole story. The success of the Mechanical Reaper both ended a chapter in the Southern way of life while promoting a long-use practice. McCormick was loyal to the Confederacy, and there was an increase in the demand for slaves to operate this machinery. Although some found job opportunities in factories, Many farmers were displaced and left without work. Mechanical Reaper ruined my life and I have no work. And yet, with the invention of the Mechanical Reaper, he unintentionally allowed many northern farm boys to be freed from their duties. 
which enabled them to enlist in the Union, all coming at no cost to agricultural output. Since harvest yields increased, food prices lowered, which aided the fighting stamina of the North, while still producing valuable revenue for the Old World. Cyrus McCormick eventually died in 1884. Cyrus McCormick's last words were, work, work, work. In 1902, two decades after McCormick's death, his son, Cyrus Jr., along with other companies, created the International Harvester Company, which dominated the agricultural industry until the late 1950s, when problems such as poor management led to the company's decline, leading them to stop selling the equipment in 1985. Tools for harvesting grain largely shifted to the combine harvester, invented by Hiram Moore in 1835. The combine harvester was used for cleaning, threshing, and reaping wheat. The combine harvester was also quicker, more efficient, and could harvest larger amounts of grain. And the combine harvester eventually did not require the use of ponies! The combine harvester is still largely used today. Thank you for hearing our presentation on the mechanical reaper. Now for a quick song. <laughs>